Thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nation. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. As we navigate through these uncertain times, one thing that we do know, that Jesus is the captain of our soul. That we have a powerful assignment as the church to be salt and to be light. Thank you for joining us this morning in praise, worship, and the word. We are glad that you're here. As we prepare to go in, bow your heads with me for prayer. Father, I thank you for this morning. We come with great expectation of what you will speak to us. We come wanting to know what our assignment is in this next week. But most of all, Jesus, we come to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise that you're so deserving of. I thank you in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, come on, let's go into worship. I have come to magnify the Lord on this morning because he's worthy of all of our praise on this morning. If you've turned your living room into your life room, go ahead and stand up on your feet. Feel free to clap your hands and worship the great I am, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah, Jesus. We will worship the Lord with praise and we'll shout in all the earth. He deserves glory. Yes, he does. Sing. For he is the great I am. 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 We will worship the Lord with praise we'll sing and we'll shout in all the earth. He deserves glory. Yes, he does. Sing. For he is the great I am. For he is the great I am. he is, for he is the great I am, sing holy is he, holy is he, holy is he, holy is he, oh he deserves, and he
worship God and thank him for his mercies. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We give you
It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events in aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you, and please enjoy the rest of the service. We're going to go all the way. I'm encouraged on today. Worship with me. Hallelujah. Use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me nearer every day because I'm willing, willing, Lord, to run. Lord, don't be angry, just let me stay, because I'm willing, willing, Lord, to run all the way. We're going all the way. Say with me, oh, all the way. All the way, all the way, all the way, because I'm willing, Lord, to run all the way. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Lord, don't be angry. Oh, just let me stay because I'm willing. Lord, I'm willing to run, willing to run all the way. I'm going to say that verse again. Use me, Lord. Your service. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer every day because I'm willing, Lord, to run on, willing to run all the way. Yes, I am. Oh, Lord, if I fall. While I'm trying, please, Lord, don't be angry. Oh, just let me stay because I'm willing, willing, Lord, to run, willing to run all the way. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. We say all the way. Run on all the way. Oh, I've got to run all the way. I'm going to run all the way because I'm willing, willing, Lord, to run. Got to run all the way. I'm not going to stop right here. Oh, blood, if I falter. While I'm trying, please don't be angry. Let me stay because 
come on and worship him right there where you are. Just, just, just a little piece of a song. I just can't give up now. We've come too far from where we started from. Nobody told us this road would be easy. And I don't believe God's brought us this far to leave us. Thank you, Lord. There's an old song that says, no, I'm never alone. Jesus promised to keep me. And no, I'm never alone. Before I even go into the message this morning, I, 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 I feel good, as Brother Walker would say, about the whole thing. I know that God is in control no matter what men do, no matter what men say. We know this, is that Jesus is alive and he's still in control. No matter what this one says, no matter what this, that, that one says, no matter what solution people are looking for and what direction they're looking. I'm telling you, Jesus is still the answer for the world today. Above him, there is none other. Jesus, he's the way. I know that you've gathered and, 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 and you're in the largest, in front of the largest screen. We're coming to you from our life room into yours. And we thank you for being with us on this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and we recognize our mandate to rejoice and be glad in today. New birth, I want to say I love you with all my heart. And although we are not having services in person very soon, we will be and again we will be led by the Lord there will be a meeting a zoom meeting for uh, new birth members um, but we will keep coming to you every Sunday we will be coming to you every Sunday those who are not able to make it out we will continue to stream the service live uh, we know that everybody's not going to be able to make it uh, but be on the lookout for more announcements and instructions about our soon gathering. We're looking at the date of uh, June 21st that we will open the doors and begin to gather. Um, so again, look for more announcements and we'll be coming with more information. I appreciate you being here on today. I, 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 more than anything, I appreciate the Lord and what he is doing. You know, with all that's going on in our world, we've got to stop and turn off all the noise because it's that clatter that's making us question and wonder and, and, and seek for resolution and answers. Uh, but I want you to know uh, this morning there is a word for God's people in the midst of these things that are going on in the midst of a pandemic that is not over yet. We're still dealing with it. I don't care what anyone says. And I, like I said, Jesus is in control. I trust that. But we still must take care uh, because of what's going on around us. I still know him as a healer and a deliverer, but there is an expectation of us to still use good old-fashioned common sense and wisdom. And that's what we're going to do in this time. And we're dealing with uh, the murder of a young man, the, 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 the taking of a life in worldview uh, and all that that's going on. Listen, there is a way that God has called us. And, and, and especially with all these current events, uh, they, they, they call for a voice Hear what I'm saying. These current events call for a voice. And as men and women of God, we cannot and must not sit and be silent. Men and women of God, we cannot and we must not sit and be silent. 
That's why I take part in some of the activities I'm taking uh, part in because we have a voice and we must say something. But understanding there is a kingdom agenda that we must, as again, as men and women of God, seek first the kingdom of heaven. Seek God's way, God's will. God, what is it you want me to do? What is it you want me to say? I preached last week on God's peace and our storm. There are those who understand the authority that they have in Jesus' name. We speak and we rebuke the wind and we speak to the sea just like Jesus did and we tell it just like he said, hush and be still. I'm speaking to all those spirits that be not like God in this season. You hush and be still. The spirit of racism, the spirit of division. Hush and be still in the name above every name, in the name of Jesus. Let's go to the word on today. In Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the first verse, let's go there. Isaiah 6 and verse 1. I know you have your Bible and you're reading along with us. Isaiah, the sixth chapter. The first verse, it reads in the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And the one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory and the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. Then I said, woe is me for I am ruined because I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongues. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. I'm going to go on a little bit more further in, 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 in uh, this morning's message. This morning I'd like to use for topic, I see the Lord in this. I see the Lord in this. You see, with everything going on right now, especially those who have an ear to hear and those who have an eye to see, we must see the Lord in this because if we don't see God, we can't speak peace to this storm that's raging. If we don't see God, we can't calm what's going on. And don't get me wrong. We should be saying something about these events that are taking place right now. We should be speaking. Everyone who has a voice ought to be speaking to the current events. You see, uh, what's going on here at a time of high emotion for Uzziah, or for, 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 for Isaiah, because of the death of King Uzziah. You see, God used the death, and, and this was marked by the death of King Uzziah. Isaiah's call is marked by the death and, and, and the time period of King Uzziah. And it's used, being used to get uh, the attention of the prophet. You see, the um, current events, God didn't do this. God is not punishing anybody. But he is using these current events to get the attention of God's people because he wants to speak to us through this. God didn't just show up just to show up. 
He shows up because number one, there's something he wants to say. Number two, there's something he wants to do. I believe we are set. God is setting God's people up and we are in the process of one of the greatest revivals in history. Those it, who, who recognize and understand it's time to come home. It's time to come back to God. It's time to get away from those things you've been involving yourself with. Uzziah's reign marked the height of Judah's days of power, a powerful military, and a good economy. You see, God stepped in when everything looked like it was going good for them. Being led by King Uzziah. Under his reign, everything is beautiful. And then God takes him home. But he does it to get a nation's attention. You see, enough things have happened. We see past presidents beginning to speak and people are saying, well, why didn't they say it when they were in office? Why didn't they do such and such when they were in office? You see, thing after thing, time after time. But we've come to a place where people are saying now, no more. And God is raising up a voice. There is a sound going out in this earth of no more. I watched as, as this young man was beautifully eulogized. And people are standing up to say, this can't happen anymore. There must be a release. There must be the hand of God to come in and to begin to secure God's people like never before. But it's okay to say no more. This marks Isaiah's call. And he comes to a place where he has a vision, which is God's preparation for his purpose. You see, God is never going to call you to anything without showing you what it is he's calling you to. Without preparing you for what it is he's calling you to. Listen, God is calling us in this time. He is calling us to a place of readiness. He, we must be prepared to hear from the Lord. Not just walk the streets and chant, but we've got to pre be prepared. Believers, we must be prepared to hear from the Lord so we can speak to the wind and rebuke it and speak to the sea that's raging right now. What do you have to say? You see, the elevated vision, in the, you, 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 you must look higher than you are right now. The elevated vision brings kingdom strategy to earthly situations. The elevated vision brings kingdom strategy to earthly situations. Go with me to Colossians, the third chapter. Therefore, you've been raised up with Christ. Keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind, King James will say affections, on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. Set your affections, fix your mind. Set your affections on the things above and not on the things of the earth. You have been raised up with Christ. You are in him. He is in you. So you can't think the way you want to think because you and Christ are now one. One mind, one direction, one vision. Get the catch the vision so you can do the things God wants you to do. You've been raised up for this. You've been brought through for this. You've been delivered just four times like this that set your mind when you continue reading which I'll probably be preaching over the next couple of weeks when you and what he's saying here is not just a mind thing is get yourself ready get yourself right because there's some things you've got to do you've died and your life is in hidden 
with Christ in God in that third verse. There are some things we've just got to, as believers. Hear what I'm saying. There are some things we've got to be dead to. There's some things of the world, even in this season, we must die to and elevate our vision. Look above what's going on right now. I, I, Jesus, last week when I was talking, he gave them a destination. It, you see, when you see all these things and they frustrate you and they anger you and they should, then you've got to look above that so you can see God in the way he wants you to see him. Get a vision. Set your mind. You see, I've got to look above this so I can receive what I need to deal with this that's in front of me. I'm looking higher before I look forward. Because looking forward will mess you up if you don't look higher first. If you don't see God before you deal with men, sometimes it will mess you up bad. Some things you have to try to recover from over time because you could have taken a moment and sought God. Set your mind. Focus your mind. Focus your thoughts. Get kingdom strategy. You see, what this vision did for Isaiah, a few things. He saw God. In an extraordinary vision. He had an extraordinary vision of God. God called him aside for an extraordinary vision, an extraordinary look, an extraordinary. He didn't just go to a church service, but in that, in, in, in this time and in this space, he saw God. Let me tell you, with all this going on, you must find a place of worship where it takes you into the throne room and you can see God in the midst of all this, in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of death. We're getting calls of people who are still dying of a deadly virus. But in the midst of this, you've got to find your place of worship. We don't know what's going to happen next in our nation. So you've got to find your place of worship, not just another church service, not just another Facebook live, but you must find, turn that stuff off and get into the face of God so you can see him like you've never seen him before. I'm asking God in this season, show me you like I've never seen you before. Let me experience you because of what you have for me to do. Give me a special encounter. Come into my room. I invite you not just into my heart, but I invite you into my house. I, I invite you into my bedroom. I invite you into my office because wherever you want to meet me, God, I want to see you more than ever before in this season. I know that you will show up and show yourself strong. An extraordinary vision that shows him the position, his holiness. He sees, he says, I see him high and lifted up. He sees God in his holiness, his highness. You see, we hear the royal terms for people, his highness, your majesty. But you see, we don't know those things because we don't live in those places. So those words don't mean a lot to us. But when you begin to catch a vision of God and you begin to see his highness, his highness, his holy place, the place where he has positioned, he's positioned himself on high. And you've got to acknowledge his highness. You've got to acknowledge, acknowledge his aboveness. You've got to acknowledge his extraordinary self. He's no extra, he's no extraordinary. He's not just an ordinary fella. He's, he's God and God all by himself. And sometimes we get so casual that we forget he is high and lifted up. We don't 
stop acknowledging his position. The next thing he sees is his power, the power of his might, the power of his holiness. He sees that things begin to happen. Things begin to rumble at his presence. The sh he, when he comes into the room, the very foundation of where he is begins to shake. Why? Because he's entering a place. Listen, God is entering all of this that's going on. And because God is entering into this, things are shaking up. They cannot stay the same. Hear what I say. I speak this in the name of Jesus. The very foundation of your home be shaken up. The very foundation of your job be shaken up. The very foundation of your ministry be shaken up because his highness has entered into your place. Thank you, Jesus. The purpose for this was the call. We see God in his position, in his power, and in his purpose. The second thing we understand is this was a humbling experience for Isaiah. He said, when I saw all this, because of the revelation of God, because I noticed him and I saw him for who he was, then he began to show me who I am. I saw his highness. I saw his holiness. And in the mirror of God, I began to see myself. You see, folk don't want to acknowledge. Folk are getting upset because folks are saying black lives matter. And, and no, don't say black lives. Say all lives. Understand this. We understand that all lives matter. We've learned that through history. But you, you see, history only taught us about Frederick Douglass and Martin Luther King and, 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 and Harriet Tubman. There's more to it than that. I've learned in it that, that it's okay to say my life matters. It's okay. But I understand this. In the presence of God, like Isaiah, I begin to see myself. You see, because the first thing God wants to do is show you you. So some of us need to get into our worship place so God, and say, God, just show me me. I don't want to look at this group. I don't want to look at that group. I'm not saying Black Lives Matter because it's a movement. I'm saying it because it's a fact. But I don't want to get caught up in that. While I worship you, show me who Charles Ware, man of God, is. Because that's who this world needs right now. Is a man who knows who he is because he's been in the presence of the Lord. Get in God's face and tell him, God, just show me me. Show me my flaws. And he began to see his flaws. And in the presence of God, it humbles you. Because I'm a flawed man, which, which, which tells me that Isaiah may have had uh, 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 some, uh, uh, a few problems with self-identity. You know, some say he, he may have been a little arrogant or cocky, whatever it was. But when he got into the presence of God, it humbled him. God wants a humbled people. Woe is me, for I am ruined. Next thing was a spirit of urgency stirred up in him. The commission. When God says, who's going to go for me? I need somebody to go for me. You see, from a humbled place, after his mouth has been touched, God said, don't worry about who you've been. I'm going to change all that. I'm going to fix all that. Don't you worry about it. That's in my hands. Angel takes the coal from the thing with the tongs and puts it on his mouth. He says, now your tongue has been fixed. You, the, 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 that little bitty thing that rules the whole body is what the Bible says. God says, I'm going to purge your tongue. And the things you begin to say won't be of yourself, but they'll be from me. You see, what this nation needs right now is a word from the Lord. Not just a good speech from a politician. We need a word, a true word from 
the Lord. He said, your iniquity is taken away and your sin is forgiven. There are those, listen, and, and, and I'm going to say this right now. There are those who've been living in unforgiveness. It's not that everyone else hadn't forgiven you. They've forgiven you. It's time for you to give, forgive yourself and get up and run again. Yes, what you did was messed up. But what I did was messed up too. What the one sitting next to you t- Probably what they did was messed up too. But it's time to get up, forgive yourself, and begin to move in the direction God wants you to move. He says, I heard a voice from the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? The commission. You see, God doesn't come, as I said earlier, just to show up. He comes to speak so we can do God comes to speak so we can do who shall I send who will go for me I've been commissioned Matthew 22 14 says many are called but few are chosen this is a call to service Many are called, but few accept that call. That's what it says. Somebody said, well, why does God pick this one and this one and this one? Many are called, but few accept the call. There are more people who turn down the call than accept it. He said few, few people. But you see, it was after It was after the experience Isaiah had. Now he's been stirred up. We used to sing a song, or we sang a song I did a play with my brother Tommy. And we sang a song, Gotta Keep Moving. Said, life's road is rough to travel. Nobody has a map, but I know one day I'll find my way if I just go one more lap. You see, because we've been called, we can't give up now. Preacher, because you've been called, you can't give up now. You're going through in your ministry. I feel you. The pain of your ministry. And you you see, the pain of ministry will make a pastor question his very call. I've been there. Thank God for people who came to encourage me that I will call angels. God just sent an angel like he, like he sent the bird to the prophet under the tree ready to die. Fed him and said, now get up and keep on moving. It's a tough road we're walking right now. You see, greater than the road to justice, we're walking the road to salvation. Justice is what men want here on earth. Salvation is my kingdom agenda. So I'm going to walk that road. I'm going to show up and I'm going to speak up because I've been commissioned by God to service. And service is not the building. Service is not the building. Service is out there. I'm here to tell you, I see the Lord in this. While people are trying to figure out what's going on, I see God moving. I see the hand of God moving in this. I see the hand of God moving in the midst of a pandemic. I see God moving in the midst of a people out in the streets. I see God moving in your home that looks like it's about to divide and separate. I see God moving in your finances where it looks like you don't have any more money. But God is moving on your behalf. And the the, the writer said the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to become a change agent. He's anointed me to say some things. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me right now this morning to let you know he's moving on your behalf. I'm going to pray. 
as I have every week. If there's anyone who doesn't know the Lord, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I stand in your presence. Here I am in your presence in this holy moment. And I see you in this moment. I see you calling me. I feel you calling me. I give my life to you. I surrender my will to you. I come to you a sinner. I acknowledge every sin. I ask you now to come into my heart, not just for this moment, but for the rest of my life. I'll serve you. You'll be my God. I'll be your child. You'll be my father. I'll be your child. I thank you. From this moment, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Listen, if you've prayed that prayer, you have just become what you said. A new creation in Christ Jesus. I thank you. And from this moment, do what God has called you to do. Seek those things which are above and see God in the midst of everything that's going on. Thank you, and God bless you. I want to talk to you for a moment about your giving. We appreciate all those who've been a blessing to New Birth Christian Center in this time. You make sure that everything is taken care of here at the house, here on the, on, on the campus. You make sure that everything is taken care of. And we will, over this next couple of weeks, we'll be doing a lot. So we're ready to welcome you home. Uh, but those who give, we appreciate every gift. And I know that by now, they've put it on your screen, uh, the, the, the different ways to give. I want to say, not just for New Birth Christian Center, but for everyone who sows into New Birth Christian Center, this is good ground. And what we receive goes into making this campus what God has called it to be, taking care of the business and doing the things that God has called us to do. For though there are those who have given from across the country who have sent their offering in, we thank you. And we pray the Lord bless you many times over for your grace giving. We thank you. We're about to go back into worship. But as we do, I want to say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Be blessed of God. Do his will. God bless you. Show the love of the Lord. Great and mighty is our God. Let 
partnering with us in worship today. We're so glad that you chose New Birth Christian Center to worship with. Our prayer is, is that you're encouraged to go in faith, that you're inspired to draw closer to Jesus, and that you endeavor to be salt and light in a world that needs them so desperately. Remember, you are the church. Bow your heads with me in prayer. Father, as we leave today, we pray that you go with us that you continue to navigate us through these uncertain times, that you stand forth powerful and strong within us. God, help us to be the light that you're calling us to be. Encourage our hearts, Father. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless.